Hi everyone. Today I'll be doing the technical bulletin number 210 on the 212. Bulletin number 210 on the Bell 212. This bulletin you're gonna find it also on, to be done on the 412, 205, and here we too, but under different uh, TV number. And the issue is uh, when you're flying, sometimes oil can come out through here. Uh, so the process is pretty simple. We're gonna take that retainer out, uh, move the pedal back and forth, and make sure that the scooter come out uh, inside the scooter, uh, which is part of the housing made of aluminum. We're gonna clean everything, including inside the housing of the gearbox. So when we install it with a uh, low addition pro seal, can bond together and help seal in the area. And this bulletin is related to oil leaks through the push-pull tubes area here. Okay, so let's start right now. Right now, I'm just taking the return out. Now you can see the excluder. All this section here is gonna be pulled out when I move the pedals. When we move the pedal, this push-pull tool goes on the opposite side to change the pitch of the blade. So what we're gonna do now, hopefully when we uh, move the pedal back and forth, the whole thing can come out. Let's see what happens. It will not come out stuck, so I have to take the that cap out of there. For that, I need to take the push pull tube out of there. I have to take the cross head or section of the cross head to take the bearing and the sleeve where the bearing runs so I can push out the, the push pull tube and then remove that cap on the left side of the gearbox. Okay, when you're removing the cross head, I'm just trying to make it quicker. Uh, we take the lock out, safety wire, we take these two things out, get the lock. You don't have to unbend it, uh, leave it bent like this, because really it's going to go inside again. And then you break the torque of this, this is a retainer. I uh, have to function, that's where you put the grease. The grease is going to be done every 50 hours, it's only two shot. And when you take this off, I already pre-made it so I can make a short video very quickly. Uh, when you take that knot out, what you're going to find later is going to be that knot. I already take the cutter pin out, and that's the bearing. And what you do in order to take the cutter pin or install it, you're going to disconnect the piece of links. You disconnect the piece of link and the cross head links that go to the support in here. And what happened, I can slide this out like this. I have better clearance for safety wiring and everything. I mean, cut a pin the, the nut. When you're gonna cut a pin this nut, you have to remember that this nut is static and the retainer is dynamic. So make sure you bend the, you bend the, the cut a pin in a way that it's not going to be binding inside of this uh, retainer, okay? Just be careful. When you do this, I take this off, take the retainer, and what I'm gonna do now is to push the bearings on the crosshair so I can access the sleeve, which is the only thing that is holding me for removing the push-pull tube, this one, from the other side of the gearbox. When I remove that, not everything, everything come out like this. And that's the sleeve I had to remove in order to push pull the tube on the other side. Okay, I think I already explained to you everything I did on the cross head side. Cross head. Now in here, uh, I already removed pretty much the the lever, the bell crank, so I can put this out. Okay, and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is so I can take this cover and work on this from inside out so I can push out uh, the excluder, which was already stuck on it. I can do the bulletin. And I'm gonna take the time to investigate, search what's going on.
because the key on this one, uh, the gearbox leaking a lot of oil. And I'm right now chasing and troubleshooting it to see if I can stop that leak. Now, when I try to push the excluder, everything, the housing, everything won't come out. So really now, I have to take this cap out. I'm right now removing this uh, three uh, nut. And right here, we're gonna have the jack screws to pop everything out. We got Pro Seal here, we need to clean it and take this off. Okay, as you can see here, uh, it's already opened it up. I'm using the jack screws, three jack screws to pop this uh, cap on this side. Okay. Here, what I did, I just went in a shop local around here in San Diego, and I got uh, three generic uh, bolts, one quarter 28, to use as a jack screws to split the cap from the gearbox. And that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, we got here the cap on the left, uh, left side of the gearbox. You can see here the excluder, you can see uh, the housing. And we're gonna have to see the bearing, that one there. Now look at the grease, it came all the way here. And if you look at it, let's see if I can point it out to you better with a flashlight. Okay, you see the all that stuff in there? Well, that is grease mixed with oil. And you have to remember the cross head, so I had the cross head only. As you can see here, uh, this is inside the gearbox. That is the output shaft. And uh, the push-pull tool goes through it, and you can see grease around there. Grease there, uh, uh, it can be found normally, well, if you over-service it, but uh, having the grease on the cap like here is because when all the way is too over-service. Remember, uh, when you're gonna lubricate the cross head, the cross head, only it is uh, two shot every 50 hour that's it no more okay uh, that's a non purging type of grease so you don't expect grease to anywhere because what you're doing when you grease it if you over grease it you're going to press the grease inside here and what happened uh, if you keep putting more grease grease is going to go through here go inside here we mix with oil go into the gearbox so you have to be careful when you grease in the cross head okay the issue with this gearbox is shooting oil leaking oil like crazy in from here from this level to right below here in two hours and only this region is oily so i'm doing the 210 bulletin right now which is in here i need to take that out it was very tight so i had to take the housing with the excluder and we put Pro Seal low addition between the housing and the aluminum housing of the scooter. Well, uh, what I had to do it will not come out. And what happened is uh, I used put like this. That is about a wood block. Fun. I got so lucky. I got found one that's right on it, and push it out a little enough that this uh, the housing of the scooter come off. So what I'm gonna do now, wait for the procedure to arrive, clean this very good, uh, use some uh, cleaner, make sure there's no oil in there or here, and install this pro seal in there. I need to look, point it out one thing is, uh, remember after you install this, this uh, retainer goes in here, 
And one thing that you need to pay attention to it, if you see this aluminum housing, in one side have a shoulder, not on the other one. So this is my point I wanna make. Whenever you're gonna install the scooter, if you install it like this, and you put the retainer, you are not holding pretty much anything and the Teflon can come off. So you have to remember, this is the come off, you see how easy it is? So when you're doing this, make sure that this is the outboard, outside, outboard. So the shoulder, the aluminum shoulder go out, so keep everything inside after you install the retainer. But you can install this like this. Yeah, everything will work. Everything gonna be uh, tightened, but you are only holding the aluminum housing outside, but uh, the scooter will not come off. So remember, the shoulder of the housing goes out, and that's where the retainer is gonna keep everything in place. And the pro seal goes right here. Again, this to seal all this, okay? I already ordered the packing, it's supposed to be here tomorrow, and put everything back on. Okay, here I'm gonna explain uh, the replacement of the bearing. This bearing here goes inside here. Again, this is the cat goes on the left side of the Natty Gear box. And the function is, in a way, as a bearing, is to make sure that the push pull goes straight and center. And with time, you might have seen worn out here, plus the push pull tube, so worn out. Uh, we need to having a lot of play here. That play can induce a vibration on the tail rotor because then, pretty much, this tube that goes through here with the play it has is going to be affecting the crosshead, and the crosshead, but it's sometimes, going to be affecting the pitch link and the pitch horn, and then the tail rotor blade. So this is very important when you are checking the tail rotor. If you can move the blade sideways, like a, in the core wide, like a changing, trying to change the pitch. If you notice some play there, should have not that much play, uh, it could be this uh, bearing. And this bearing, in order to remove it, you're gonna be taking out of this side uh, the retainer and the scooter and the housing. And I already explained to you earlier, the, uh, the housing, you see, here, you see here, the shoulder is nothing. This could be called the face. And this is the back, where you see the big, long uh, shoulder. And the shoulder always go out, like this. If you install it like this, you're gonna make the scooter to pop out and then you have an issue, okay? The white Teflon, the function is to scrape, make sure you nothing uh, is outside on the tube, gonna go inside the gearbox or go inside the bearing, wearing it out. So right now, I'm gonna replace this. Uh, to do this replacement, you have to remove the cap. And that cap, in order to, after I remove everything, uh, you find whatever you have available. In my case, uh, this is a uh, sticks. I just cut a piece, and I, folks, I got lucky. It's right, the right dimension. And I just pop it out with a hammer, or if you have better, if you have a, a press, uh, it shouldn't be that hard. Uh, show you how hard it is. Let me see if I can. It's already gone. You see, this is the old one. And uh, when you look at it, they don't have a right or wrong. This is symmetric. You can install it either direction. When you install this, make sure you sit it all the way down on that edge. Okay, what I'm doing now, I'm putting uh, the low addition pro seal. So when I install the uh, scooter, uh, that's where the one the one to seal that area, okay? Uh, I can put it in here too as well, but uh, my belief is if I put it here, I just wanna squeeze it out. And this way, I'm making sure you're gonna be sealing between the bearing and the scooter. So this is what I'm doing right now. Here you can see already, the shoulder out, I got a retainer on, and you got the bearing. So pretty much, this is done deal. Uh, ready to put back in the helicopter. With the TB200 apply on this 212. Okay, the way it works, this is on the left, the cap is on the left side of the, the gearbox. And this is the push-pull tubes. And it goes 
goes right there. And it goes right there. And pretty much slide back and forth. And the scooter the function is to blow like a scraper. Make sure that uh, any dirt collect here will not go inside the gearbox. Uh, with time, that bearing that I show you, start having play here. And when that play comes, uh, I'll show you later when everything's assembled what's going on on the crosshead, okay? But that's why uh, you might have to replace the bearing if it's a lot of, um, you find a lot of worn out uh, wear on the, on the uh, bearing. In here, on that section, kind of shining there, that's where that um, uh, scooter works on it. Maximum allow is 50,000, if I'm not mistaken, uh, of wear. Uh, it's good advice that whenever you can or you work here, you rotate this so it works evenly.